ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶ ಶಾರದ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಉತ್ತರಂ ಯತ್ ಸಮುದ್ರ ಹಿಮಾದ್ರೈಶ್ಚೈವ ದಕ್ಷಿಣ ವರ್ಷ ತದ್ ಭಾರತ ನಾಮ ಭಾರತೀಯತ್ರ ಸಂತತಿ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಕೇದಾರ ಖಂಡ ಅಂಡರ್ ದ ಮಾಹೇಶ್ವರ ಖಂಡ ಇನ್ ದ ಸ್ಕಾಂದ ಪುರಾಣ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಲರ್ನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ the churning of milky ocean but all that happened because before that indra had disrespected his preceptor brahaspati and because of that reason he was cursed to lose his kingdom and then before, i mean at that time the daityas have attacked him and took away his kingdom and then this churning of milky ocean happened from which all the devatas were drank drunk with the nectar and became more powerful and regained their kingdom and after regaining the kingdom indra was installed back in his position at amravati however his preceptor was not there and this raised the doubt to the sages shonakas who are listening to this story from the sutra lomasha hence the sages shonakas and others questioned lomasha the sutra it has been mentioned by you that devendra regained kingdom without his preceptor it was an account of disrespect to his preceptor that he had been dethroned from his kingdom touched by whom did he retain his position for a long time do tell us all these things quickly we are very eager to hear it because as a king as a king he is supposed to be placed in the on the on his throne by his preceptor lomasha replied to their question the consort of shachi mean the indra ruled over the kingdom of heaven without his preceptor the great indra could continue to rule over the kingdom due to the religious performance in accordance with the injunctions of vishwarupa o brahmanas vishwarupa was the son of vishwakarma he was a great brahmin and a purohita who could able to help indra to get back onto the throne here at this point an important point to be noted is a purohita or a religious person can do all the required religious act in order to install a person install a person on the throne however he cannot guide him in a right direction like what a preceptor can do like what a guru can do so vishwakar vishwarupa himself became the preceptor and performer of sacrifices for shakta in that yagna chiras one with three he was having three heads so in that yagna performed the worship with partial oblations separately for asuras suras and human beings normally oblations are offered only to the suras devatas whereas trishira was very cunning he was also offering it to asuras and the human beings in the direct presence of indra every day he used to give ladles full of soma to devas with a loud shout that means with a very very bad mood he used to offer the offerings to the devas and to daityas he was offering it silently and to human being in a fallen middle tone so that the others cannot know that he is giving the offering to the daityas as well the human beings and people were think under the impression that he is giving the offering only to the devas but after some time as devas are becoming slowly weakening indra realized that he is doing this cunning act once he was detected due to his partiality regarding relative importance of oblations by indra who remained concealed and unobserved then the desired object of prishiras was understood by indra devendra thought he is making this piecemeal offering for the sake of accomplishing the task of daityas 
He is our preceptor, but gives the benefit to our enemies, Daityas. After thinking thus, Shatra cut off his head instantaneously by means of his Vajra, the thunderbolt of hundred spikes. The death was instantaneous. But at the same time, when his head was cut off, the Kapinjala, a sort of partridge birds, were born from the face with which he drank the Soma juice, then from the other face with which he drank liquor, the Kalavinka or the sparrow birds were born, and from the other third face, the Titpiri birds of various forms were born. Thus Vishwarupa was killed by Shakra, the ill-fated one. The female fiend, born of and called Brahmahatya or Brahmana murder, it's called as Brahmahatya, it manifested there on the spot because Vishwarupa himself was a Brahmana, he was killed by Indra, so naturally now he will be run after by this Brahmahatya. She was terrific and unthoughtable, she was evil faced, wicked full of chandala impurity and could not be blocked or defeated. The terrible sinners are those who sleep brahmanas, those who drink liquor, those who steal gold, and those who defile and outrage the modesty of the preceptor's wife. The means of expiation for these sinners is the utterance of the names of Vishnu, since the mind has him for its object. The three-headed fiend with smoke-colored hands rushed forth to swallow Indra. Thereupon Indra fled from there out of great fear. He, on seeing him fleeing, the terrible devil Brahmahatya chased him. Wherever he ran, she too ran after him. If he stood anywhere, she too stood before, beside him. She behaved in the manner of a shadow of one's own body. When she came so close as to envelop him, Indra sank beneath the water suddenly, O Brahmanas, like an old aquatic being. Thus three hundred divine years passed since the consort of Shachi, Indra, began staying beneath the waters with great misery. A terrific state of anarchy spread throughout the heaven. Thereupon devas, sages, and ascetics became anxious and worried. All the three worlds were overwhelmed by adversity, O Brahmanas. Even if there is a single Brahmana slayer in the kingdom staying there with impunity, ultimately death of good men will take place there. The king of the state wherein he, the Brahmana slayer, lives becomes contaminated by the sin. There will be prevalence of famine, death and calamities. There will be many misfortunes causing the destruction of the subjects. Hence, dharma should be practiced by a king with great faith. Similarly, the ministers of the king too should be installed with purity. Sin was committed by Indra and due to that sin, O Brahmanas, the whole of the universe met with calamities along with great distress of diverse kinds. Chaunaka inquired at this point. It was by performing a hundred horse sacrifices that the great realm of Devas was acquired by Indra. O Sutta, why then did Chakra met with, meet with obstacles? O highly fortunate one, you tell us exactly as it happened. Sutta replied to the query, In the case of Devas, Dhanavas, and particularly that of human beings, Karman alone is undoubtedly the cause of happiness and misery. An immensely, irrepre an immensely reprehensible act has been committed by Indra, O Brahmanas. He insulted his guru in the beginning, the preceptor Brahaspati, 
and then vishwarupa his next preceptor was slain his wa the wife of gautama his another guru the preceptor an elderly one was cornally approached that was ahalya he spoiled the modesty of ahalya it was the fruit of all these sins that was reaped by mahendra for a long time there was no way of atonement for the same if persons committing wicked and sinful deeds do not perform expiatory rites for the same they do incur miseries just like indra so he had performed a hundred sacrifices if sins are committed an atonement should be performed instantaneously in accordance with the injunctions o brahmanas for the sake of quelling all the sins if minor sins are repeatedly performed they turn into major sins those men who steadfastly cling to their duties of the morning midday and thus can get their sins destroyed they attain the excellent world there is no doubt about it hence this person of evil conduct reap the fruit of his karma all the guardians of the quarters hurriedly deliberated together they approached brihaspati and reported to the preceptor about indra everything they had in their mind on hearing the words uttered by devas brihaspati the intelligent preceptor thought about the anarchy that had begun to spread what shall be done now how will they secure welfare devas the world then sages of sacrificial sanctified souls in his mind he thought over the details of what should and what should not be done accompanied by devas the preceptor of great fame went to indra they reached the lake where purandara the indra was lying hidden and on the bank of which was staying the devil of brahmana slaughtered terrible like a chandali all the devas accompanied by the groups of sages sat there then shakra was called by the preceptor himself thereupon indra got up and saw his preceptor with tears flowing over his face he spoke to brihaspati he bowed down to all the persons assembled there he pondered over the great blunders committed by himself before as a result of ignorance he joined his palms in reverence and with a piteous face spoke o lord tell me what should be done by me just now the holy lord brahaspati of liberal mind laughed and said o indra this is the result of that act of yours committed previously against me only by experiencing its result can it be annihilated but no atonement of brahmana slaughter has been seen laid down by the authors of smriti texts expiation has been described by those conversant with dharma shastras or the code of laws for the sin committed unknowingly there is no atonement for an offense which is willfully committed because indra has made all the three mistakes which are willful and not unknowingly a sin committed by a person intentionally does not become one committed unintentionally expiation is laid down for both based on the differences in the objects if a sin is committed willfully mean deliberately the expiation is to be performed up to death atonement is laid down in case of sins committed unknowingly since this has been intentionally done by you since the twice born the learned the priest has been killed because who is a dvija trishras trisha vishwarupa was a brahmin so there is no atonement 
stay in the water sure and wait for your death the meritorious deed of your stern performance of 100 horse sacrifices are the ashwamedha yagas o oh, evil minded one has already been and the, all that hundred sacrifices whatever you have done hundred ashwamedha yagnas whatever you have done that has already been destroyed because of your slaying of the vishwarupa disrespecting brahaspati and disrespecting the wife of another guru preceptor gautama and at the very moment when the twice born was killed by you just as not a drop of water remains in a pot with holes similarly meritorious deeds of sinner go on reducing every moment hence by good luck if heaven etc are attained those can be retained only by really righteous ones there is no doubt about it on hearing his statement indra spoke these words undoubtedly this has fallen to my lot through my own misdeeds as in to amaravati along with the celestial sages o brahaspati for the purpose of accomplishing the task of the worlds as well as of the devas the o sage of great fortune crown as indra any one whom you approve in your mind and well out by the great devil of brahmahatya i am just like one who is dead i have been overwhelmed by the sin arising from raga the attachment and dvesha the hatred hence hasten all of you to make someone king of devas you have my permission for the same i am speaking the truth to you on being told thus all those devas with brahaspati at their head came to amaravati immediately and coolly told shachi everything about indra's activities as they had taken place they consulted one another and began to deliberate thus what should be done for the sake of the kingdom while devas were thus deliberating narada the celestial sage of unmeasured splendor came there by chance on being honored he asked devas why are you all sad and perplexed on being inquired thus they spoke everything about chakra's activities indra status of being the lord has come to an end on account of a great sin thereupon narada the celestial seed spoke these words to those devas you are omniscient devas endowed with the power of penance and valor hence nahusha born in the lunar race mean the chandra vamsha should be made indra he should be established in this real o devas immediately because 199 horse sacrifices or ashwamedha yagnas have been performed by that noble soul nahusha o highly fortunate ones nahusha was a regular performer of yagnas that statement coming out of the mouth of narada was heard by shachi with her eyes filled with tears and not engaged in anything seriously she went into the inner apartment on hearing the words of narada all the devas congratulated him they approved of his suggestion to make nahusha the ruler of the realm unanimously then king nahusha was brought to amaravati and the kingdom of mahendra was given to him by all the suras and great sages then all of them served nahusha agastya and others gandharvas atsaras yakshas vidyadharas and the great serpents rakshasas the birds of bright wings and other heaven dwellers also served him then in the city of devas there was a continuous grand celebration 
counts, musical instruments, mridangas and dundubhis sounded simultaneously. In that grand celebration of the kingdom of devas, musicians sang songs, players of instruments played on them and dancers danced. Then he was coronated there by the sages of whom Brahaspati was the foremost. He was worshipped with Devash, Devasukta and was made to perform the worship of planets in due procedure and with formalities. The great king Nagusha was duly honoured and respected by the learned sages of the sanctified souls and by all others also. As a king of Suras, he sat on the throne of Indra. He had the same features as those of Indra. Endowed with the greatest splendor, he was eulogized by all. Dressed in excellent, sweet-scented, bright garments, and with his person adorned excellently with ornaments and articles of enjoyment, Nahusha appeared resplendent as he was being eulogized by prominent sages and leading devas. Thus the great king Nahusha, who was endowed with great ingenuity, and worshipped by groups of great devas and sages, became severe, severely tormented at heart by intense passion or the lust. Nahusha said, How is it that Indrani does not come near me? Call her quickly. It does not behove you to delay. On hearing the words of Nahusha, the liberal-minded Brihaspati went to Shachi's abode and spoke in detail. It was on account of the calamity fallen on Indra that Nahusha was brought here for the sake of kingdom. O oh, beautiful lady, please occupy half of his seat. That means you become his consort. Shachi laughed and spoke to sinless Brihaspati. He has occupied the seat of Indra without completing the quota of hundred Ashwamedha Yagnas. Only ninety-nine horse sacrifices have been performed by him. Hence, he is not qualified enough to obtain me. Let this be thought over quite truthfully. If this senseless fellow still continues to be desirous of me, wife of another person, let him obtain me by coming here by means of a vehicle that is carried by undeserving carriers. Saying, so be it, Rahaspati written hurriedly to Nahusha, who had been distressed through intense lust. He reported to him what was spoken by Shachi in her own words. Saying, so be it, Nahusha, who was deluded by lust, thought over it. He deliberated on this intelligently. Who can be the carrier not worthy of being so? After thinking about it intelligently and trying to remember for a long time, he decided thus the Brahmanas and the Pascetics are not usually thought of as carriers. I shall make two of them bear me in order to reach her. This is my decision. So the king who was deluded by lust gave the palanquin to two brahmanas. Seated in that palanquin with great concentration, he urged them on the words, Sarpa, Sarpa, Muan, Muan, because Sarpa also means the serpent, Sarpa also means Mu Haritli. Agastya, who had been one of the palanquin bearers, became infuriated and cursed the king. You are the lunatic and despiser of Brahmanas. You be a python, mean the serpent or the sarpa. Immediately after the utterance of the curse by the Brahmana, the king became a python and fell from there itself. Indeed, the curse of Brahmana is untransgressible. Just as Nahusha became a python, 
so also all like him fell into dirty hell by disrespecting brahmanas hence in order to attain benefits here and hereafter a wise circumspect person who has achieved a position of importance should refrain in all possible ways from committing blunders mahusha became a serpent in a very dreadful forest hence there prevailed anarchy in the world of devas similarly all the devas were struck with the constipation alas what a wretched condition the king has fallen into this evil minded fellow has ordered neither the mortal world nor the heavenly world his fund of merits has been instantaneously burned down if there is another if there is any other person who has performed many yagnas let him be named o great sage then the excellent sage narada of great splendor said o highly fortunate ones hasten to bring yayati messengers of devas went immediately and brought yayati quickly the noble soul yayati got into an aerial chariot and went to heaven accompanied by the messengers of devas he was then honored and received by the excellent devas as well as serpents yakshas gandharvas and siddhas he arrived at amravati and was then propitiated by devas he seated himself on the throne of indra and was immediately addressed he was told thus by narada you are a king who has performed yagnas by insulting good people nahusha attained the status status of venomous serpent those virtuous persons who attain the highest position by means of good luck become deluded to on account of previous karma they do not see dis- distinguish between auspiciousness and inauspiciousness those stubborn persons fall into terrible hell there is no doubt about it yayati said obstacles beset those persons to who have performed unmeasured and limitless meritorious deeds they were by no means a small measures o celestial sage know that every one of those deeds of mine was very great great charitable gifts have been offered along with the gifts of food many gifts of cows have been made along with the gifts of lands too similarly all excellent religious gifts mentioned by learned persons have been given by me then and there at the proper time and in accordance with the great injunctions the sacrifices of vajapeya atiratra jyotishthoma rajasuya ashwamedha etc as mentioned in the shastras all these have been performed by me the earth has been adorned all round with sacrificial poles the lord of universe the lord of devas has been worshiped in many ways this daughter madhavi was given to kalava in the city daughters were given to four persons as wives o sage for the sake of the intelligent preceptor of galava namely vishwamitra these and many other meritorious rites have been performed by me formerly they are great and more numerous it is impossible to recount all of them that king was again asked by all the devas were all these holy rites performed secretly by you and properly too we wish we all wish to hear the truth o yayati we are all desirous of hearing too on hearing the words of devas yayati of unmeasured splendor described everything regarding the remaining part of his meritorious deeds 
Everything was described without leaving anything. Everything was severely mentioned in detail, recounting his own merits. Yeyati fell down on the earth because those merits should not be disclosed to anybody. They should be done in a secret. Whereas here, Yayati is disclosing everything in front of the sages and the devas. At that very instant, even as all the suras went on watching, Yayati fell down. Thus, anarchy was produced and spread quickly. None else was seen by them deserving to be crowned in the place of Shakra on account of his being the Yajna performer. Let this be heard, O excellent Brahmanas. All the Suras, sages, great and leading serpents, Gandharvas, Yakshas, Khagas, Charanas, Kinnaras, Vidyadharas, groups of Suras and celestial damsels, all these became full of anxiety. So too were the human beings. Thus ended chapter 15 of the Kedarakanda under the Maheshwara Khanda in Skanda Purana. And in this chapter, we have seen how Indra, on realizing that he lost his Indrahood, has given up the throne and asked Brahaspati to install someone else in his position. And then Brahaspati, on consulting with the divine sage Narada, he brought Nahusha from the earth and he installed him as the king of the Devaloka. However, out of lust towards Indrani, Nahusha ordered the Brahmanas to carry him in a palanquin to her inner court. And at that time, Agastya cursed him to become a serpent. And then it was Yayati who was brought in here to become the king of Devaloka. However, Yayati went on disclosing all the meritorious deeds he had done throughout his life. And with that, all his meritorious deeds are lost and he fell back to the earth. And then the anarchy once again prevailed over the Devaloka. Namaste Sharada Devi Kashmira Puramasini Tvamaham Prarthaye Nityam Vidyadanancha Dehime Goodbye.